Welcome to another Collab Talk Tweet Jam, a post-Tweet Jam interview. Uh, today we're talking about navigating the Microsoft Partner ecosystem, and I'm joined by Paul. Hey, Paul. Hey, Christian. Hi, everyone. Why don't you introduce yourself for folks that don't know you? Sure, sure. Um, so I'm Paul Solsky. Uh, my day job is I head up AIM International. We're a uh, a business development uh, uh, consultancy for partners, and we help ISVs to uh, to build partner channels and expand into international markets. Um, with, but I'm also a member of the IAMCP and have been so for about nine years. Um, I have two roles at the IAMCP. One is to lead the P2P initiative uh, internationally, and the other one is the that I am the Seattle president. Congratulations. And for those that don't know, so Paul and I go back years through the Seattle chapter. Uh, so he was there at the beginning. Uh, I, so Jeff Shuey and I uh, restarted. We're co-founders of the new, the Seattle chapter of IAMCP. And folks that don't know that, it's the International Association of Microsoft Channel Partners, which is all about peer-to-peer -peer networking. So uh, it, it, you don't go to those meetings trying to find uh, you know, a, an immediate customer opportunity. They aren't customers that are going to these sessions. It's other partners. And then to share in how you could grow your business internationally. And, and I have stories, you have stories of where we've been successful in doing exactly that by yeah, leveraging yeah. partners. And I'm pleased to say Jeff Shuey is still the treasurer and on the board. Still involved. Well, you got to rope Absolutely. him in somehow to keep him responsible. I know. Yes. So the, the, the topic today, and you know, following on Inspire, it's always good to have a partner discussion in the month of July, um, talking about the Microsoft ecosystem. And we've got changes. We've got a new channel chief. We've got a bunch of changes within the Microsoft partner leadership team. And there's also changes to the program itself. So we're talking about some of those things. So let's start off. Question number one, what are the top issues facing Microsoft partners in 2022? I know it's subjective. Sure. It's meant to be. <laughs> so uh, from the partners I, I speak to, and there's sm small, medium and large, um, you know, the feedback is that COVID has been good for business. And if, you, if you've been in the right areas where you're dealing with collaboration, um, security, cloud migration, uh, then uh, some of the, the partners have had the best years ever. If, um, if you're dealing with on-premise and legacy systems uh, and um, maintenance of those, then uh, chances are that uh, that business has been fairly stagnant. So, but generally, there is, uh, it's been a good experience with the um, amount of technology customers were, uh, were buying. Um, the challenge has been that it's been so good that there is a uh, a lack of the right technical resources. So being able to do the projects and getting the right people in, and the feedback is that um, people are pushing projects out because they simply don't have enough uh, people to be able to, to, to do them. In, in terms of issues uh, specifically for 2022, and uh, probably a, a lot of those have to do with um, being part of the Microsoft Partner Program or the Cloud Solutions Program is Microsoft is uh, uh, pushing very strongly that everyone that has IP or a solution um, is, lists themselves on the marketplace mm -hmm. and also becomes part of the COSEL Ready uh, Program. And partners are, are saying, yes, we'll absolutely do that, but uh, we, we're still yet to see uh, the the ROI on on those investments, the marketplace leads and and the um, co-sell leads that come to them versus them bringing them uh, to Microsoft. The other thing is that um, you know more and more automation is taking place, more wizard driven applications, uh, everything in the cloud, m much much more simplified. So there continues to be this need to differentiate and differentiate with new technologies and differentiate with, with new services versus all the other uh, partners that are out there. And, uh, uh, and, and the way partners are, are looking at this is they develop in-house, some develop in-house skills 
and move into AI and move um, into the power platform and build solutions around that. But others are looking at partner to partner collaboration, uh, building joint solutions and going to market together so that scale out their solutions and they can much more quickly acquire the expertise they need to build better and more complete solutions that enable them to be more uh, competitive with much larger partners and also be uh, potentially be able to deliver those solutions not only in the US but uh, all around the world. So P2P uh, seems to be a, 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 on many uh, owners, partner owners minds on how to scale their business and how to build, deliver better solutions and how to be more competitive. You know, that's something like like my company, AppPoint, we launched our new partner program uh, the day after Inspire last year, last July. And we had a goal of to talk about like the growth potential of, of P2P as an ISV with these solutions. And most of what we see, our growth is going to come through channel. Our global rapid growth will continue through channel. Uh, we had a goal set of adding 200 partners by the end of the year, so a six-month period. Within three months, we got to 500. Whoa. There was such... Yeah, it was very successful. Yeah, and and so we're continuing to grow that. We have even bigger goals and targets uh, for this year as we expand that out there. But it speaks to that need of these of MSPs and SIs and VARs of all kinds, all shapes, all around the world that are looking for solutions and specifically then knowledge of how they can take these solutions and go and differentiate in their market. So it's not just the products, but they're looking for that go to market help, uh, that guidance as well. So there's there's opportunities for ISVs, for MSPs, for the and SIs, as well as for vendors in the ecosystem that can help partners more rapidly onboard and kind of shape their offerings. So yeah, there, there's I, I would say there's still, even with everything that happened during pandemic, there's still tremendous opportunity in those areas that, that you just listed off. Um, I think we're going to continue to see growth, uh, yeah, regardless of what happens with the market here short term. Yeah, just on growth there, Christian, I'm just recalling some of the um, numbers that were quoted at Inspire. And uh, one number was that only uh, less than 10% of all IT spend is on cloud. So the, the, those legacy systems are costing a lot of money that the, the companies want to get off. And the other one is that the, the cloud is, is growing um, at more than 30% year on year. So yep. pretty impressive. Well, our second question we covered was getting in specifically around the program. Uh, what have been the benefits to your business from joining Microsoft's partner program? And again, these these questions are meant to be broader and and depending on where people are within you know the the, the journey as a partner might you know answer differently. But what are you hearing from customers about the value that they're seeing? Yeah, you know, it's um, there, there are three tra traditionally three areas where partners have really benefited um, from the partner program. And um, number one is in, in uh, having achieved a certain level, um, they're able to smaller partners in particular are able to leverage uh, the Microsoft brand and also to be able to say, yes, we, we've met. Uh, Microsoft's highest requirements, whether it's silver, gold, or certified for Microsoft Dynamics, or or something like that, and that has always been uh, well used to establish credibility with customers, even if the customer doesn't ask for that. Um, the second uh, 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 that Microsoft has a, a very rich portfolio of programs and resources that they make available to partners. The worldwide GTM team and, and their equivalents in the countries have, have really um, put together catalogs of services and some of those services are, are gifts in return for, for Azure consumption. Mm -hmm. Others are just agencies uh, available to, uh, to do uh, work for partners. So uh, simply the, the programs and, and benefits um, are an asset. And the last one is, of course, um, the, the technical expertise that is offered through the various courses that that enable partners to really be able to deal with more co complex solutions across such a variety of areas. So those are the three that I see. And I would add a fourth on there. I know it's sort of outside of the program, but you know, being partners is what enables community like 
uh, like an organization like a IAMCP to also provide added value on top of that. I mean, that's the the core. We might be multi cloud, you know, vendors. We work in multiple technologies, not just Microsoft ecosystem. Yet we're all Microsoft partners that are looking for opportunities. How can we work more together? How can I might not have an idea? Here's what I do. What do you do? How can we help each other? That's a lot of what happens through the community aspect of being a partner and within the ecosystem. Absolutely. And just specifically on the IAMCP, um, there is a, the P2P initiative. What what we've done across the, the organization is firstly uh, enabled members to connect, not just at a chapter level, but at region level. So mm -hmm. across Canada, US and LATAM. But and also worldwide, and then uh, on a monthly uh, or actually quarterly basis, twice a quarter uh, or uh, two months a quarter, there is a regional P2P uh, networking opportunity aligned by solutions, by industries, and by partner types. So it's not like a big party; it's really focused around partners, business areas, and you know, half of it is about opportunities and half uh, of, a, of each session is three or four partners or members getting together and talking about how they can collaborate uh, on solutions. And then once a quarter, uh, the IMCP brings the entire community together in those breakout sessions mm -hmm. uh, to, to leverage the power of being a, a global organization. Well, if it sounds like Paul and I are, are pitch men for IAMCP, it's because we're pitch men for IAMCP. Yeah. Uh, if, if you've not taken a look at it, and, it will, and then we'll go to the next question. Yeah. Go take a look at IAMCP.org, check it out. Uh, and there are chapters in major areas. There's a huge virtual chapter as well. If you're in a region that doesn't has a, have a local chapter, uh, there are plenty of options that are out there. So the third question is around Inspire, which was last week. That is Microsoft's global partner conference. There were a ton of announcements, a lot more product announcements than I thought would happen for this event, which is usually focused on you know, the channel activities and partners. So what are your biggest takeaways from last week's Microsoft Inspire event? Yeah, yeah, you know, several, several. Um, first of all, it was a digital event. And so it was convenient, but it, it wasn't the same impact as getting uh, together. And for my business and also partners I work with, uh, a huge part of uh, attending the partner conference or Inspire has been the connectivity, uh, the uh, connect, making connections and yeah. and you know meeting people. So that's obviously uh, missing, and uh, I hope that. Uh, we uh, that's addressed in, in future uh, based on what the situation with COVID is. In, in terms of content, um, there are a few messages. Um, now, firstly, that um, I would say overall, this was an iterate, iteration of past investments and programs and, and focus areas as opposed to being something that was new uh, and visionary and and was was changing everything um, and so but I'm not saying that it's bad because this this is you know the right things to do for for this time and having those investments and enhancements um, is, is a good thing it's just that it's not you know changing the world uh, right. Kind of, right well there, there, there's always been that kind of complaint to, to Microsoft is like Fix the stuff that's out before you start adding new things onto it, which is more of a pro. You know, and, and there's pros and cons to the speed at which new features and right. products come out. But that's yeah. also been attributed to kind of you know, the partner community and partner aspects. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, I think a lot of people would be glad that there is a, a continuation and execution as opposed to, you know, change of people and change of priorities. So it, because it takes time to make investments. Um, I think the, the good part was, uh, so the general focus was the digital imperative, digital transformation, and I mentioned some of the numbers of, of how many, uh, how big the opportunity is globally for, for digital transformation. Uh, but then there was a, a, a drill down, particularly in Satya's session, um, and I would highly recommend that one, um, about uh, 
opportunities in, in specific areas. So business solutions and so Microsoft, I'm sorry, I should say industry solutions, Microsoft's uh, investment in building a solution by, by industry and solution clouds come with that. Then there was additional focus in, in uh, around security and governance and sovereignty um, uh, for security. That's uh, clearly that's a, a hot area. Uh, hybrid uh, work. Um, one of the st statistics shared was that 73% of employees want to work uh, remotely, or at least have the option to. And then there was a, a great deal of um, focus around AI and, and data and new app, uh, creating new applications, smarter applications. And then for um, Azure, there was the, the, the uh, um, claim, if you like, um, oh, that it is unique in, in delivering the multi-cloud uh, experience environment with Oracle and, and others. And it was impressive to see Larry Ellison and Satya Nadella on the same split screen saying, supporting each other uh, yeah. after, after many decades of hard competition. Um, it was great to hear about new programs. Uh, a couple of examples was enhancing the ISV Connect program as well as the new ISV Success program, which is just limited uh, uh, admission right now, is going to be evolve. But it's great to see Microsoft focusing on have, filling white spaces with more solutions and supporting ISV. Again, that's an area I, I know that they've been feeling the heat of ISVs. You know, so much of Microsoft's messaging and efforts on a lot of the programs have been around service organ based organizations, and it's like yes, but. The, the the ecosystem is as large as it is for for a good portion of that because of partner solutions and that's been something that's been very unique about Microsoft technology and part of why they've been so successful in the enterprise has been because of these you know extending the the uh, you know these partner solutions and providing these opportunities so I, I'm also I, I'm excited to see more about the ISV success uh, program as well. Yeah, definitely. And I think Microsoft's vision of being this one stop shop for all solutions across all major industries and verticals and so that um, uh, companies, small, medium and large come to Microsoft uh, yeah. is a good one. Uh, the, the last one I would say was that there were a lot of product announcements and you'd have to really get into the individual sessions, but around the various Viva iterations, uh, dynamic contact center, completely new application, and then addition of uh, modules for Dynamics 365, and a lot of uh, in uh, the Power Platform and others. You, and I would just encourage anyone to go and uh, look through the sessions for uh, Inspire 2020, and um, they're recorded and available. Yep, that's, I'll be, next few weeks, we'll be combing through those sessions that are all uh, waiting in my backpack, my virtual backpack there within uh, the Inspire site. So the fourth question was getting specifically into the program changes. So how does or will the overhaul of Microsoft's partner program, now called the Microsoft Cloud Partner Program, impact your business or impact your customers' businesses? You know, Christian, um, there are different perspectives um, on this, depending on uh, the kind of partner, the size of the organization and the, the focus areas. So um, the first is that it's harder to get the accreditations that they had in the past. Um, and um, and therefore, it's it requires a greater investment. Uh, but also, because it, it's harder, uh, it's a source of differentiation. So perhaps um, those accreditations are going to be much more meaningful and worth more. Um, the other one is that uh, the, the the slant seems to be more towards larger organizations that can invest more people and and generate more revenue. Um, so the the question then arises: Okay, is the investment worth it? And then the, the other question is: Do customers care? Uh, and so it's just open question it, it, yeah. uh, because. You know, some people say that uh, they've never been asked by a customer, what are your um, competencies? Right, right, yeah. your competencies, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's uh, the partners that actually promote them 
yeah, to establish credibility versus the customers asking for them. I am hearing from a lot of independents and small companies that are going to be directly impacted by that. They're like, we're, we're not going to fit into the new solution partners with the specialties where we don't have the, the dollars. We're not the size to go and do that, especially a lot of in the you know, trainers people that they're, they're tightening as well the the uh, around like the MCTs the Microsoft certified trainers making that more difficult so there's they're scaling that up which is fine for the larger organizations it's it's not great for the independents that then don't have those that might be a, a, you know a, a big part of their marketing is the fact that they are you know an MCT or that they are a you know they're small but they're a silver uh you know provider of this this competency so it, it'll be i think like anything we see a change like this i think if if you know once we go through the adjustment period uh, they're going to get a lot of feedback microsoft will get a lot of feedback about that impact to the small players and i think something will change something will adjust around that i it, it's it's the pendulum in some ways um, and until that feedback is in, we can't just complain about this stuff. If it's impacting our business, we have to let Microsoft know so that they can make the necessary adjustments. They've shown that they, they will pause something or, or, or go back to the old model in certain areas if it's you know, impacting in a way that they didn't foresee. Yeah. Uh, so they're, they're listening. Yeah, yeah, and it does help to be part of a community which amplifies your voice because Microsoft so solicits opinions, and as you say, they they do listen. So, and I completely uh, agree with you that this will be an evolution. This is not a, a completed, you know, sealed in in concrete kind of program. It'll evolve, and you know, this is also. Uh, there are questions about, you know, uh, how how does it need to be adapted to ISVs versus partners? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, that, yeah. and that's yeah. I, I and, well, and the next question kind of goes into some of that. It says, how will the streamlining of competencies replacing gold and silver status with solution partners and six solution areas impact your business? And we've kind of addressed that. It's yeah. it's. Um, I mean, it, 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 on the positive side of this, it is making having those competencies uh, uh it, it, because it there are fewer people that are qualifying it's making it more meaningful then it goes back into the question of you know does it really matter to, to customers uh you know microsoft working with microsoft it may be uh more important to them so they can truly identify and for folks that aren't aware too it, it's not just that they're taking like two dozen different competencies and and streamlining it down in um they're also now as part of it. They're really focusing on the uh, 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 on the business drivers, being able to show and prove that you have net new customers, certain revenue goals, the targets are being hit in those areas. So there's having the technical personnel that are trained in the right areas, and that you're actually doing business in that area. That gets you to that new, let's call it gold status. That new status of a solution provider um, versus just, hey, we've got the technical personnel, we'll show you know, a couple customer references, but are we showing the same customer reference each year? I mean, there were, there were ways kind of around it. It was softer, squishier in the, the old model, and they're tightening that up. So I get it from Microsoft's perspective. It's just, I, I think by the end of this calendar year, we'll start to be, we'll be hearing the impacts um, from customers if there are impacts. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. And also, I think there's an onus on Microsoft to make these new accreditations worth the investment that's required and to yeah. promote them. And for Microsoft to, to say to customers, these partners are outstanding for these reasons and it's not just because they got trained or they won a couple of customers uh, you know and, and so microsoft has to define the value proposition yeah. to customers so that partners can uh can essentially monetize their investments i just i think to what we've said earlier they i i think that that makes perfect sense for service-based partners the larger service-based partners there need to be nuances. There need to be differences for ISVs. We'll see what that is. And there needs to be something 
to ramp up independents and, and small players. We can't just cut them loose. Um, so they, they there has to be a place for them. And uh, I think that's going to be a matter of discussion this new fiscal year. Yeah. 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 And you know what? Uh, I'm here in Seattle and there are other technology companies where partners want to partner with and the competition is fierce. So okay. you can't just exclude the, the innovators that, and the startups. Exactly. Well, the sixth question goes into specifically like the relationship with Microsoft. How is your communication and collaboration with Microsoft and in what ways can it be improved? Like what do you hear from customers at, at the frustrations or successes with, you know, collaborating with Microsoft? You know, it's, it's mainly from partners and uh, as opposed to end user customers uh, that, that I uh, can comment on. And uh, um, I would say that there is a trend, a continued trend to uh, have digital engagement and programmatic engagement at scale. Uh, and that scale seems to be expanding. So it's uh, fewer and fewer partners that, that get managed and uh, come under these and uh, the co-cell readiness uh, program or some other programs and that kind of uh, the feedback is that the kind of creates a uh, distance um, and it, it's hard to to, uh, to get to the people unless you're a very a substantial um, organization um, and so again it's helpful to be part of a community whether it's wit or uh, any other IMCP, uh, where that your voice can be amplified and, and you can uh, get to the uh, leaders of, of various organizations and have a conversation with them. But I think that the trend to uh, scale managed, which is really unmanaged, uh, uh, is continuing and uh, it will continue because the company feels uh, it, uh, it, uh, that's all that's needed. Yeah, there's, um, I, I know it, it's like, so we're as a managed partner, you know, we've seen our, our um, PDM take on more customers. That's mm -hmm. been part of that scaling up. Uh, so it's, uh, and that's, that's happening uh, at, at partners, managed partners at every level. Um, but it's a, I, I mean, one thing, Microsoft is getting better at providing digital resources. Yes. Partner Center is improving as a platform. They're, they're, they're consolidating. There's still a lot of missing pieces, um, but they're consolidating those pieces, making it, you know, better, uh, more, more useful and uh, more accurate, which is always a positive thing. Um, but we're, you know, we're we're finding that with our interactions, we just have to stay on top of the context we have to make sure that, you know, a, a agreements and timelines are being met, you know, as discussed and, uh, you know, as frequently as possible. For yeah. for organizations that are smaller and, and feel like they don't have a voice, I mean, again, as the pitchmen, I mean, that's a great way to go and uh, and join organizations like IAMCP, like WIT. Um, from yeah. a product standpoint, if you have specific feedback in an area, I mean, the the product teams are probably listening more than any other aspect of the business, of Microsoft business. Uh, so if you have feedback on SharePoint or Teams or Power Platform, uh, there are, uh, you know, people who's, you know, it's, part of their measurable uh, commitments to be plugged into the community and listening that listening to that feedback and responding back to them. Uh, so there, it, it, if you have questions, if you have issues, uh, there are certainly channels through which you need to go. Yeah. Um, you know, open a ticket, not just a support ticket, but to go in with ideas or like, hey, here's something that could really help my business. You know, that you need to go and get plugged into a number of different places so that your voice is heard. Yeah, yeah. And it's also uh, in addition to products, it's it's solutions and industries. And there are industry managers there who, if you have uh, something that's very relevant to their focus area, uh, then um, they will certainly listen. Uh, the only challenge there is maybe identifying who they are. And just from my own experience, I've seen two things that really uh, make Microsoft uh, uh, management or, man uh, or 
program managers um, listen or perk up. And um, one is that it, uh, your idea needs to drive revenue, Azure consumption typically, or but consumption or maybe the Dynamics platform. And the other one is competitive advantage. If yep. yeah, if Microsoft, uh, if your solution, whatever it may be, or service uh, drives, uh, creates competitive advantage uh, for Microsoft against its competitors in whatever target, then Microsoft uh, will listen there as well. And I would maybe I would add a third one. If Microsoft um, perceives a, a white space in an uh, industry segment or solution type, uh, and you're able to fill it, particularly if you're an ISV, then you also uh, get an ear there to uh, to get engaged. And then the final question, Paul, um, what are your recommendations or best practices for new partners who are joining the Microsoft ecosystem? Yeah, um, you know, the first is um, uh, learn about what programs are available and plug into those programs like ISV Connect as an example. Um, look at what the GTM team uh, is providing. They're really valuable assets and how do you qualify uh, to, to get those benefits from the GTM team. Uh, become co-sell ready. Uh, don't expect a, a vast flood of, uh, of leads or uh, invitations, but it's a, it's a way to get on the map and be able to, uh, to talk to, to, the, uh, to Microsoft field people. But I, I hate to sound like a broken record, um, but I have to say, the IAMCP is a terrific way of you to to get involved because you have partners that are just like you at various experience levels. Some are new, some have been in the business for, for two decades. And they're, first of all, they, uh, they're keen to share, willing to share insights and knowledge. Um, there are vehicles for sharing opportunities and for, for partnering and learning about best best practices, and it's a very giving community. I am, I don't get paid by MCP in saying all these things. We're all volunteers. Yeah, we're but all volunteers. I, I, yeah, I, I genuinely feel that if you're a new partner, the IMCP will, would uh, be a tremendous uh, help to to for your business and get, getting started. One other place I would recommend to go and take a look is the Microsoft for Startups site and some of the resources there. Like I'm part of a, a, a mentoring program where they're, they've reached out to Microsoft regional directors and most people don't know what the, the Microsoft RD program is. Um, it's a little bit different than the MVP program, but there's also MVPs they can reach out to, but the RDs, um, all of us are, are currently or have been uh, business owners, uh, CEOs, uh, and, and experts in that. And we, I, I've done this half a dozen times where I have advised startups that spent time with me and talked about go to market guidance and how they can get started, how they can get plugged in. I'm pretty sure that I pushed every single one of them to IAMCP. Uh, but, uh, you know, so there's, there are resources that are out there. And of course, Hey, if you're watching this video, you've got Paul, you've got myself, our contact information is here in the YouTube and on the blog. And, and so, you know, definitely reach out to us as well. So Paul, really appreciate your time. Thanks. I know it's been, been a while since we've uh, uh, met, met in person. So it's, uh, yeah, that pandemic has kept me from traveling back to Seattle and hanging out with people, but I hope to get out your way soon. Christian, it's been a pleasure, and also just wanted to say that uh, you know what you restarted with Jeff Shuey in Seattle is continuing and and growing. So uh, thanks for all your investment at that time, and thanks no, for this opportunity as well. Great to have you, and thanks everybody for watching.